All right, the last concept that we're going to consider to generalize the notions of set and Boolean, uh, set algebra and Boolean logic is the idea of a complement. Uh, what does a complement mean? Well, complements are kind of like inverses when it comes to um, when it comes to lattices, but they're not exactly the same thing. So let me give some motivation what's going on here. So if we have some like power set of a set X and we look at unions and intersections, um, every set has a complement. Um, that is, if you take some subset A of X, then its complement is the set difference, right? Everything that's in X that's not in A. We have this notion of set difference. Um, we can all and sometimes sometimes these are denoted as a prime or a c. There's a lot of different notations you could use in that situation. Um, when it comes to Boolean logic, uh, we also have a complementary situation that is you have negation. Um, so if you have some type of primitive statement p, so this is a statement it's either true or false, then we take not p in that situation. So not. Um, is this idea of a complement. And so we can have complements with sets, we can have complements in logic. Uh, so we have this not P in that situation. We can do that in general for lattices, if you have a complement. And so now we're ready to define the idea of a Boolean algebra. Uh, so suppose we have a bounded distributive lattice. Distributive lattice means that meet and join distribute across each other. Bounded means that all the, all the two operations both have identities for which we call those identities zero and one. The identity of join is zero. The identity of meet is one. Uh, we're then going to introduce a new symbol here, which we'll just do a little tick mark there, a little prime notation. Um, this is the complementation map. Um, and so then a Boolean algebra will be a set with three operations now. So we have uh, two binary operations and now this unary operation uh, called complementation. Uh, so it's a distributive bounded lattice. So with regard to uh, meets and joins your associative commutative all elements right I, I potent for both operations we're we have absorption we have distributive laws which again some of those principles are redundant when you have all of these axioms but we'll we'll talk about that some other time perhaps a bounded means you have identities a boolean algebra is a bounded distributive lattice for which we now have the complement identity the complement axiom that if you take x join its identity or its complement you get back one and this happens on both sides, okay? And the complement also has the property that x meet x prime, um, its complement is equal to zero. That happens on both sides. Now, when you look at this naively, this kind of feels like the inverse axiom we have for groups, that an element operated upon by its special companion gives you back the identity. Um, so it looks like it's the inverse axiom, but one has to look past uh, the, the obvious and look at the subtle business here. One is equal to the meet identity. Okay, um, it's not the join identity. In fact, the meet identity has an interesting property. We've proven this already that if I take X join one, which is the meet identity, this is always equal to one right? Um, and conversely, if I take zero, which is the join identity, um, the join identity has the property that if you take x meet zero, this is always equal to zero. So what's interesting here is if you take the identities of a lattice, of a bounded lattice, um, their identities with respect to their operations, but they're absorbing their dominant elements with regard to the other direction. You have this dominant term, right? That X join one, doesn't matter what X is, you always get back one. Um, and X meet zero is always equal to zero. This is not something we ever see in groups. Uh, there's no such thing as a dominant element in a group, but in rings, this happens all the time. Zero is a dominant element with regard to uh, it, it's a dominant element with regard to multiplication, um, and that's because it's the additive inverse, and this is actually a consequence of the distributive property, that because of the distributive property, the additive inverse has to be a dominant element with respect to multiplication. Now, in rings, distribution only goes one direction. Um, multiplication distributes over addition. In a ring, we don't have addition distributes over multiplication, um, but in a distributive lattice, we actually expect it to go in both directions. If you only have one direction, you actually can force the other direction. We just saw that in the previous video. And so that tells us that the the other identity has to be distributed, or since it distributes, has to then be dominant with respect to the other operation. Um, and you don't even need the distributive laws. Um, we can actually prove this 
uh, using absorption uh, that we've saw before. Because when we talk about bounded lattices, the, dis the, uh, the bounded lattice, we don't necessarily have the distributive law, we do have absorption. And that still will give you this condition that the identity of one operation is a dominant element of the other operation. Okay, so getting back to complements here. So when it comes to a complement, your complement doesn't give you back the identity like an inverse does. The complement gives you the dominant element. So the dominant element of join is one. The identity is zero. The dominant element of meet is zero. The identity element is actually one in that situation. So the complement is sort of like the opposite of an inverse. The complement gives you the dominant element of the operation, not the identity. Uh, for which um, you can think of the identity as like the recessive element. It never shows up when you operate, um, but the dominant element always shows up in that situation. So complements, you combine an element with the complement to get the dominant element. So I want you to make sure you don't confuse that. X join X complement gives you one, not zero. And X meet X complement gives you zero, not one. And so let's look at some examples to try to grab this idea of a Boolean algebra. A Boolean algebra is a bounded distributive lattice with complements. Okay, uh, so Boolean logic is the is sort of like the 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 poster child of a Boolean algebra, right? That's why they're both called Boolean. Uh, they're named after Bool, of course. Uh, for which in Boolean algebra, excuse me, in Boolean logic, you have your two. It only has two elements, true and false. Um, you have your operations of or and and, and then complements have to do with not. And this will satisfy the axioms of a Boolean algebra. In set algebra, you also have a Boolean algebra structure where X is any set, finite or infinite, doesn't matter. You take unions and intersections and you can take complements. Um, so X complements your set. Uh, we have a little placeholder right there. Uh, so the set difference from the total set, this complement is uh, your operation for complementation there. This gives you a Boolean algebra structure. Um, we've also talked a lot about divisor lattices. Divisor lattices are always going to be bounded distributive lattices, but they're not necessarily Boolean algebras. And the issue comes down to complementation. Uh, because if, if, you're a, if you're a distributive lattice, if the number is square-free, square-free means that you don't have any repeated prime divisors. If you're square-free, then the complement of a divisor is just n divided by that divisor. Okay? So if you did something like, uh, you know, the lattice for 30, okay? Uh, what happens there? Well, look at the divisors with two prime, uh, look at the divisors, with two prime divisors. You get things like six and 10 and 15, like so. Um, you're gonna get two and three and five and then one at the bottom. Uh, we get this. And then let's, this would be this would be our lattice here. A little bit sloppy. I apologize there, but this does in fact give us a boolean a boolean algebra. We've already talked about distrib distribution and bounded you know identities beforehand. But you look at like six. Six has a complement. It's going to be five. And the idea here is six and five multiplied together gives you thirty, and the two are co prime with each other. If you look at two. The complement of 2 is equal to 15 in the situation because 15 is 30 divided by 2. There's no repeated primes. Uh, so if you have no pr repeated primes in your divisor graph, uh, then you're going to get a Boolean algebra. Um, what goes wrong, of course, if you have a repeated a repeated prime? Uh, let's take like 24, for example. Um, if you look at the divisor lattice for 24, um, it has as its divisors 8 and 12. Um, we have 4 and 6. We have 2 and 3 and then 1. Got a little crowded at the bottom. Sorry about that. We're going to get a picture that looks something like the following. Um, so let's consider the element 2 in this situation. Okay. To be a complement, what we need is that when we join 2 uh, with its complement, you get 24. But when then you meet 2 with its complement, you get back 1. Now, in order to, since 1, is the is the minimal element um, to be a complement? You have to be co prime. That is, the GCD has to be equal one. Well, who's co prime to two? Well, you can take one itself or three. Okay, but when you take the joins, in this case the LCM, the LCM of one and two is just two. That's not twenty four. And when you take the LCM of two and three, you get back six, uh, and it doesn't quite work. So two doesn't have a complement in this situation. Um, four has a complement, 
um, you would take in that situation. I, I take that back. You don't have a complement either. Four is the only thing it's co-prime to would be three. That gives you back a one. But when you combine them together, you get 12. So it doesn't quite work. Um, eight has a complement. That's what I meant to say. Eight and three um, are going to be complements to each other because their GCD is one, but their LCM is 24. But you have things like four and 12 um, aren't going to be, they don't have complements because they don't have the maximum number of twos. 24 factors as two cubed times three. Since four and two are lacking the maximum number of twos, you don't get complements in that situation. So a divisor graph has a complement if and only if um, it has it has uh, it, it, it has complement if and only if the, divide, the the whole number in here is square free.